Okay, here we go. We're going to be finishing up the desktop version of this application, hopefully in this video, and then we'll make a few slight changes to make it uh, run even better on the N900. What we're creating now will run on the N900 fine, but instead of displaying the number to us that we're going to dial uh, on the N900, we want to actually dial that phone number. So that will be the next video. We'll make a few slight changes. Let's jump right in to our script. Once again, I'm using Vim as my text editor. Feel whatever, feel like using whatever text editor you want. Um, ignore what I just did. I just realized after I finished up recording, I made a slight change there and accidentally changed that to an O instead of a zero. Anyway, uh, first thing I need to mention is I realized after I finished recording the last video, we want to put quotations around these and make them strings rather than integers. Um, now, we're going to change our send press function to instead of just displaying what's inside the entry box, we're going to display uh, the value of our variables as well as grab information from the callerIDfaker.com website. So first things first, let's remove this here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say um, uh, call num, which is our variable up here. But it is a global variable, so we have to add into here global like you could spell things properly and will work better. Call num, comma, fake num, comma, my number. And really we should have done that down here as well. After I finished recording the last video, I realized a few things that I had left out to say, but the program is still working as it would have. So not a big deal in this function as well. So this is basically saying that in this function, there's going to be a variable called fake num. And in actuality, instead of being a uh, local variable within that function, it's using the global variable that we shot up here. Instead of having two different fake nums, one inside the function and one outside the function, we're do using the same for both. So now that we got that out of the way, and now instead of printing the information inside that entry box, we're printing what the variable equals. We'll also print out um, here fake number. And this is something that really will be printed in a terminal. Probably won't be seen by the average user, but may help you troubleshoot stuff if uh, you're getting some errors. So now that we have that all printed out, what we need to do is we need to um, change it. Change it. We need to add an object that grabs the information from the um, callerIDfaker.com website. So we have to send the variables we've created to it, and then we need to grab the information and sort through it. Now we went over this in a previous tutorial, which was our tutorial um, that uh, does it in a bash script, and we used links for that. So let me hit up arrow here a few times. Links is a text-based web browser, and then we just use the dump switch saying that we're just going to dump the information from that page rather than actually go into that page that we're going to be working with. And then we just give it the uh, URL here. Uh, and the URL contains, you know, it's uh, callerIDfaker.com, their API for free calls. And then we got some variables here that we're going to be sending. We're going to be sending it uh, my phone number, which is the phone number you'll be calling from. We'll just put in a couple fives there for this. And then another variable for phone number, the number you're going to call, put in some twos for that. And then CID is the caller ID number, the number that we're going to be faking on the caller ID. We'll put in threes in this situation. And then there's some other variables that we're not going to really get into regarding recording and sending you information in emails. Um, we have all that turned off now, but you can easily change that yourself. It's pretty straightforward. Um, now we're going to hit enter and it sent that information and grabbed this. This is what that website replied as. Uh, just a few little things of information here. And what we care about is the phone number, which you can see on the line down here and up here. This is the pretty version with the dashes making it easier to read. Really, we want just the straight numbers right here. So we want to grab just this line, take everything after the plus sign and before this quotation mark. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use URL lib we're going to grab that information, split it at the plus sign, and then split it again at the quotation sign, 
and then we'll have just that phone number inside a variable that we can use. So let's go ahead and go back into our script here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I don't know why I'm going down, I'm going up. We're going to add in another module. Right here we're going to add in the URL lib, which I went over in a tutorial in this series maybe three videos ago. Basically it's going to allow us to grab information from a website and also send information to a website. So now back down here in our send press uh, function, what we're going to do is we're going to create another object. We'll just call it f for file. And we're going to say URL lib, the module we imported there, dot um, URL open. So basically we're using the this module to open up a URL, a website, an address, and that address is going to be the one that we had in the other terminal right here. So this right here is the information we want. And I'll just paste that in there. That might upset some people that don't like when I paste stuff into code, but I've already gone over all this, no need for me to type it out again. The one thing we do need to change is we need to replace these phone numbers with the variables that we're creating. And we will change it like so. So we're replacing those fives with my number variable. We'll replace these twos. I'm gonna go quotation, quotation, plus, and then inside here we're gonna say this will be the call number or call num variable. And then we'll replace all these threes with fake num. So basically it's the same exact URL that we used in the other example right here, but we're replacing the phone numbers with the variables that we're grabbing in our Python script. So now if we were run this script, f would equal all of this right here. That's what f equals, everything that's highlighted, f would retrieve that. Obviously the phone number we have to dial changes every time uh, and that's why we have to do this portion of the script or else it wouldn't be necessary. Um, but other than the number changing, the output format will be the same. So we need to look for any line. We want, we want to split this line after the plus sign, before the quotation. And if we just split the lines at a plus sign, since this is the only line with the plus sign, it will eliminate all the other lines. So we're going to use a very basic Python command. If you are familiar with Python, which hopefully you are if you're following this tutorial, it's going to be very easy. We're just going to use the split command to split the string. First off, first, I'm going to create uh, another variable or object called f or s and set equal to what f is if you were to read f, if I could type. There we go. So right now, s equals all this stuff. And then we're going to split s. I might be a little redundant here doing it this way, but it works. So s split at the plus sign. So once again, it will eliminate any line that doesn't have the plus sign as well, which is great. It, it narrows down uh, our code so we don't have to search for the plus sign. It just automatically strips away any line that doesn't have the plus sign. Next, we're going to say s equals s1. So basically, splitting s turns it into an array of sorts, and we're going to split it into columns uh, or I items inside that array by based on the plus sign. And if we look back at this, so we're looking at this line and we're splitting at the plus symbol. Everything on this side is column zero. Everything on this side is column one. And that's why we're grabbing S brackets one. But we still have a problem. Doing that gives us this with the little quotation at the end there. We don't want that quotation. So we will remove it basically by doing the same thing. We're going to say S, so we're taking S again and we're going to split it. Single quote, double quote, single quote. So we're going to be splitting out the quote and we're going to say S equals S zero. So after we split it once, we have everything that's highlighted right here, the number in the quotation. Then we're going to split it again at the quotation and say everything in column zero, which is that right there, our phone number. So S now equals the variable we need uh, as far as what we need to dial on our phone for this all to work. 
We're going to say print s just as an output for us as the developer to the terminal. It will print the phone number there. We're also close f because it is an open file currently. And we will also say um, entry.set text and we'll set it equal to s. So that's our entry box up at the top of our program. Uh, and basically, once we hit the button, it's going to put the number we need to call in that box. So that's it. If we typed everything right, and I think I did, we should have a functional program now. We're going to say dot slash, the name of our script. Here is our little GUI. And I'll type in a phone number here. I'll say, let's call 555-555-555. And add that as our the number that we're calling. Then we'll say 8888888888. And make that the caller ID number. Now if we click send, if I did everything right, there we go. The terminal outputted. We're calling this number. We're going to be showing this fake ID. And now we have to dial this number on our phone. And it also displays it right there. So even if you don't have the terminal open, it does show you that uh, you have that number to dial right there. So let's have a quick look at what we did again today and review. So we've created three variables, the number we're calling from, the number we want to call, and the number we want to show up in the caller ID. Then down here in our function, we're grabbing our global variables and we're gonna print the output of them so we know what they are. Once again, your number, your personal phone number isn't gonna be changing, so we're not gonna waste space in the GUI uh, for that, so it's just gonna be embedded into the script. You can change that if you'd like. Next, we're going to send this information all to this website, replacing these variables with the variables that we just inputted, and then uh, it will split up all that information and display the number we have to dial. So, if we run that again, uh, once again, I can say 222222222 call number 999999999 add fake send and once again we get the number we have to call. But what happens if we put in a malformed number? Let's say I put in 489. Oh, also you know any of these buttons at any point will clear out that number. Uh, we could add a clear button too, which is something we might want to do in the future. Let's say I just put in that number, I say call, and then I set the caller ID, and then I hit send. It gives us an error saying basically that the number that we're trying to dial is not proper because it wasn't the right number of digits. So that, that's a nice little output that we get there and in the terminal screen letting us know that we typed something wrong in the number that we're calling. Um, so that's about it. Once again, I will upload this script to uh, my website. There will be a link in the description. Go ahead, check that out. My site is filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I hope that you have a great day and uh, we have one more tutorial after this. Well, basically it's going to be the same thing, but instead of just displaying the number, if you're running on a Nokia N900, it will automatically dial the phone number for you. So I thank you once again for watching and I hope that you have a great day.